Hello, I'd like to greet you in the precious name of our Lord and our Saviour Jesus Christ. Thank you for joining with us once again for our online Bible study. Let's pause for a word of prayer before we go uh, to the Word. Let us pray. Our Father, we're thankful that we can uh, once again look into the Word of God and study it together. We pray that uh, our time together would be indeed beneficial. Father, we pray as did the psalmist of old that you'd open our eyes, that we would behold wondrous things out of this thy law. And Father, as we discover more about you through your uh, the names that you've been pleased to reveal yourself to us by, we pray that uh, it would enrich our lives as Christians, draw us uh, closer to you as we get uh, more of an understanding of uh, the great God that we serve. So we pray now you'd have your hand of blessing upon us, and we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. You'll remember that um, as we're looking at in the study on the names of God, the compound names of God, let me just remind you of some of those compound names. Uh, Jehovah Jireh, uh, that's the Lord our provider. Jehovah Rapha, the Lord our healer. Jehovah Sabaoth, the Lord of hosts. Jehovah Shammah, the Lord is there. Jehovah Tzitkinu, the Lord our righteousness. And Jehovah Shalom, which we looked at last week, which is the Lord our peace. So again tonight, as we uh, look into the Word of God and we discover another name uh, that God is pleased to reveal to us um, of in His Word, uh, we uh, we're thankful that we can understand God in this way. And as we delve into the Word of God and we seek to learn these great truths about our God, and we discover more about the person and work of God so it helps us in our Christian life it enriches us uh, it causes us to uh, continue to grow uh, I hope it's a, a soul expanding study as we know more about our God and we want to be not just knowing more about God but of course becoming more and more like him uh, David said in Psalm 17 and verse 5 he said as for me I will behold thy face in righteousness I shall be satisfied when I awake with our likeness. And that's the prayer of the believer. We want to be more and more like the God that we know. And so we're, we're looking forward to that time where when we see our Savior, we shall be like him. We shall see him as he is. Uh, but until then, we want to be growing and we want uh, his likeness to be formed in us. So the name that we're going to consider tonight is the name Jehovah Nissi. Jehovah Nissi, and perhaps you've heard this before, Jehovah Nissi, and that is the Lord, our banner. We find this in Exodus chapter 17. So if you turn with me in your Bibles to Exodus chapter 17, we'll pick up reading from verse number 8. Exodus chapter 17, verse 8. Then came Amalek and fought with Israel in Rephidim. And Moses said unto Joshua, Choose us out men, and go out, fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses had said to him and fought with Amalek. And Moses and Aaron and Hur went up to the top of the hill. And it came to pass when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands were heavy and they took a stone and put it under him. And he sat thereon. And Aaron and Hur stayed up his hands, the one on the one side and the other on the other side. And his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. And Joshua discomfited Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. And the Lord said unto Moses, Write this for a memorial in a book, and rehearse it in the ears of Joshua. For I'll utterly put out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. And Moses built an altar and called the name of it Jehovah Nissi, for he said, Because the Lord has sworn that the Lord will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. To understand who the Amalekites were, we go back to Abraham. Abraham, of course, had his promised son Isaac, and to Isaac were born two sons. There was Jacob, of which we have his children were the uh, forefathers of the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel and there was Esau and from Esau we have the descendants that were known as the 
Amalekites. And so when you think about the battle of the Amalekites and uh, fighting against Israel, there you really have somewhat of an ancient family feud going on. And uh, there was a great deal of hostility that they had towards the people of God. And no doubt the Amalekites thought that they could easily prevail over the Israelites because they just saw them as a bunch of ragtag slaves that had just been delivered out of Egypt. Uh, they didn't see them as a well-equipped army. They didn't see them as being a disciplined army. Uh, they just saw them really as being people that were slave laborers uh, under a heavy taskmaster. But uh, on the other hand, the Amalekites, they had the home advantage, so it was their ground, and uh, they were trained warriors. And so when they looked at the nation of Israel, they perhaps saw an easy prayer, but they, they didn't count or take into consideration the God of the nation of Israel. So they didn't just underestimate Israel, they underestimated Israel's God. And so we find them warring here in Exodus chapter 17. And the war really has to do with the matter of uh, seeking to have some water. As basic as that. Just a matter of fighting over some water. And it's at this place and at this battle that God is choose to um, make himself known as Jehovah Nissi. And it means the Lord our banner. Now, a banner wasn't something that was uncommon in the times of the Israelites. Each tribe had their own banner or ensign or, or standard under which they would fight. They would gather where their banner was or their, their sign was and that's where they would camp and they would also fight under that banner as well. So in Numbers chapter 2 we read in verse 2 that every man of the children of Israel shall pitch by his own standard with the ensign of their father's house. Far off about the tabernacle of the congregation shall they pitch. So they understood the concept of a banner or an ensign. We can call it by a number of different names, a banner, a standard, an ensign, a flag, or the colors of their various tribes. So um, they understood uh, a banner and they were identified by the sign of their father's house. Here in our text in verse 9 we read, Moses said unto Joshua, Choose us out men, go out and fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I'll stand on top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. So I'd like you to notice this. Uh, Moses is counseling Joshua to pick out some young men who are going to go down and fight in the battle. Uh, Moses would go to the top of the hill with the rod of God and with Aaron and Hur. And they would there, in the sight of all Israel, be able to lift up a standard, lift up a, a banner. And the banner that they'd lift up, that Moses would lift up particularly, was the, the rod of God. And so this is a symbol under which they were fighting. This was the symbol of their cause, if you like. So we sometimes think of it as Moses' rod, but here it is spoken of as being the rod of God. And you think about this rod, of course, it was a wonder-working rod because God had used this rod to uh, bring about the plagues of the nation of Israel. It was the rod that God had used to uh, bring about a path through the, through the Red Sea. It was a rod that God used to bring water from a rock. So Moses lifts up this selfsame rod uh, up above his head and there it is as an ensign or as a banner um, of the fact that uh, this is the rod of God. So they were um, reflecting on the fact that it is God that was going to bring about the victory. In the same way that God uh, brought about the plagues, opened the Red Sea, brought water from the rock, God was going to give them victory over this particular battle. So it was the rod of God. It was the banner of God, we could say. And so when we think about this particular narrative, how should we interpret it and how should we understand it? Well, we, remember, we want to remember that in this particular series that we're doing, we're discover, discovering various ways in which God has revealed himself to man 
uh, in various instances, and he would reveal a truth about himself uh, to his people. And in this particular passage, it records the defeat of the Amalekites, and it records the victory that Israel won, and it uh, sets before us this wonderful scene of them fighting under this banner, the rod of God. Now we remember in, in Romans chapter 15, the Bible tells us in verse 4, it says, For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we should, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. So we want to learn a, a lesson from what we read of here in the book of Exodus. And there are a few things that we can um, be helped by as we consider this text. The first thing I'd like you to notice is that it was a public demonstration of their faith. In the same way that today an army would go to battle under their colours, in fact each regiment would have their own colours, and oftentimes the colours are affixed to a flag. So sometimes it could be in between two posts and then you could have a banner and it would be the ensign or the colour, or it would be commonly today as in a sense of a of a flag, but it's a public demonstration of their allegiance. And so with the rod of God, it was a clear testimony to their allegiance to God. And if you think down in the valley, Moses on top of the hill, uh, there would have been banners everywhere. Uh, from the children of Israel, men from each tribe, they would have had their banners, they would have been fighting under that banner, but more importantly, above uh, the fight and above the battle that was going on below, there was Moses on top of the hill and they all united, fought under that one common banner, banner, banner which was the rod of God. So publicly they stood under it. They were unafraid and unashamed to declare that Jehovah is our banner. He is the one under which we are fighting, Jehovah Nissi. Now, we don't know whether the Amalekites uh, necessarily understood the significance of it, but we do know that the Israelites would have understood something of the significance of the rod of God. And so they were encouraged by the fact that God was their banner. And as children of God, I want to say to you that we can be also greatly encouraged by the fact that we march under and we fight under this banner as well. The fact that Jehovah Nissi, the Lord, is our banner. It's a public demonstration of our faith. In Psalm 60, in verse 4, the Bible says, Thou hast given a banner to them that fear thee, that it may be displayed because of the truth. And so it's a public de declaration of our faith. So God had revealed to Israel as Jehovah himself as Jehovah Nissi in a time of great need. And then God, God goes on and records these things for us in his word so that we might know and be encouraged by the fact that God is our banner. And so as we go into the battle, we uh, as Christians today can be greatly encouraged by whatever the battle we may have, we can be greatly encouraged that we fight under this banner. And God is our banner. And, of course, he's the one that is able to give to us the victory. So let me give you a few verses uh, in the New Testament that speak about our victory. In Romans chapter 8, and verse 31 and verse 37, what shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Psalms 118 and verse 6 the Lord is on my side. I will not fear what man can do unto me. 1 Corinthians 15, 57. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And 2 Corinthians 2, verse 14 says, Now thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ, and maketh manifest the savour of his knowledge by us in every place. So we can be encouraged by this that God is our banner. And as we fight under this banner, we are assured of victory. 
So that's the first thing that we can take from it. And the, the second thing that we can uh, perhaps glean from this passage is that it was not just a, path, a, a, a public demonstration of the faith in God, it was also a powerful demonstration of their faith in God. Now, we need to be mindful of the setting and what had happened before. Israel had just traveled through uh, a, a, a great desert wasteland. And, and all through this journeys that they had, God was helping them and, and giving them grace and he was providing for them each and every step of the way. And here they come to the place in their journeyings that they have an unprovoked attack upon them by the Amalekites. And it was just purely a matter of having uh, uh, somewhere to, to drink. But it seems that the Amalekites wanted to control their waters and they wanted to prohibit Israel from drinking of it as they passed by. Now God had been providing for his nation in these wilderness journeys and he wasn't going to stop providing for them and so the Amalekites were going to understand that God as an all-powerful God was going to be providing and protecting his people. So Jehovah Nissi was their banner and was their confidence and God in love was preserving and protecting them and he would do so again. So again, I remind you that that rod of God that Moses held aloft, that was the rod that uh, had brought about great deliverance for the people of Israel. It was the rod that, that uh, God used not just to open the Red Sea, but to close it and in closing it, destroying that great host of the Egyptians. It was the rod with which God had before provided them with waters. And so in these journeys that they had, God was time and again uh, demonstrating his power to the people of Israel. And this time was going to be no different. God was going to, in a very powerful way, demonstrate his power to the nation of Israel. Thirdly, it is also a practical demonstration of their faith. So the wonderful picture that we have before us in this text is there's a battle that goes on down below, but on the mountain there was another battle that was being waged as well. And I think there are two applications that we can take from this. The first obvious application that we have is that of prayer. As the men were fighting in the valley below, Moses, as he lifted up his hands and lifted aloft the rod of God, he was engaged in prayer for them as they engaged in the battle. The Bible tells us that we're to lift up holy hands in prayer. So in him lifting up his hands, it was a demonstration, if you like, of his being engaged in prayer for the battle. Now the Bible says that his hands were heavy. And so you know how it is when you carry something for a long time, it seems like it's packing on extra weight with each minute that you hold it or carry that item. And so it is if you lift your hands up and you keep them up, it seems that they get heavier and heavier with each passing minute. And so this is what happened with Moses. His hands were held aloft in prayer, holding the rod of God, and his hands became heavy. And he was an older man, of course, at this time, and so uh, he was struggling to keep his hands aloft. And the, the Bible says that as he lifted up his hands, so Israel would gain the advantage and would gain the victory in the battle, but when his hands dropped, the Amalekites were getting the advantage. Now Moses had Aaron and Hur that had climbed up the mountain with him. And so they set Moses upon a stone, and then Aaron and Hur one on either side of Moses would lift up Moses' arms and the rod of God, and so the people prevailed. So that is a, a wonderful picture of how we are to be prevailing in prayer. You know, as believers, we're all engaged in the spiritual battle. And we, we, know, we may not all be involved in the exact same fight or in the exact same ministry, 
uh, but we're all engaged in this battle. And we all need to be a people that are going to be engaged um, at the place of prayer as well. And so the picture that you have is Moses uh, praying for the people of Israel as they fought the battle. And then you have the picture of Aaron and Hur that are holding up his hands, helping him, and they're helping him uh, to prevail in prayer. And I'm mindful of the fact that uh, as a pastor of the church, I, I need people to be praying for me. I need you to be lifting up my hands so that I can prevail and so that I can continue on in the battle. And so it reminds us that all of us are engaged in this great work for God. We're workers together with God. And so we're to lift up holy hands and we're to pray and we're to be looking to God to give us the victory. We can't do this alone. And so I need Bible Baptist Church to be helping me uh, as a pastor so that I might uh, fulfill my role and do my duty and be the kind of pastor that you need me to be. And so we all need to be engaged in this great battle uh, as we seek to have the victory. And indeed, this includes every single ministry of the church. We need to be praying. We need to be covering those ministries in prayer, praying that God is going to help and God is going to bless us. It's a very important, it's a vital aspect even of every ministry that we have. So the picture that we have of Moses on the hill with the rod of God aloft and Aaron and her on either side helping him is a, a picture of prevailing prayer. When their hands were high, the battle was being won. And when they dropped their hands, they began to suffer defeat. Let us be reminded of the fact that if we're going to have the victory, it's only going to be through the medium of prayer. We are totally dependent upon our God. And so our prayer life is going to indicate our dependence on God. So we pray. And I want to say to you, I value your prayers. I need your prayers and I value your prayers. I want to thank you for that. And then the second thing we see by way of an application is as we look at Moses and we see the rod of God that he had in his hand and that was being held aloft to the people of God that were below uh, fighting, this was the banner. This was the symbol, if you like, under which they fought. It was a symbol of God's presence. And as they could see God's presence with them, so that greatly encouraged them and helped them in the battle. So in this particular instance, you could say that the rod of God was a symbol of God's presence in the same way that the ark of God was a symbol of God's presence among the people of Israel. And so as they fought, they fought under this banner, under this ensign that they had the rod of God, which represented the presence of God with them. So they were mindful of it as they fought in the battle. Now, Moses was arguably one of the greatest leaders that this world has ever known. But it wasn't the presence of Moses that cheered them and helped them to win the victory. They needed the presence of their great God. And so that helps us to understand that we need God uh, more then we need anybody else. Sometimes we think to ourselves that uh, we need to be looking to our leaders, and to a certain extent uh, that is true, but ultimately we have to be looking to our God. And that is why Paul said to, I think it was the Corinthian believers, he said, follow me as I follow Christ. He didn't want people just to blindly follow him. He wanted people to be looking to the Savior. And so Moses uh, he needed to be seen, but above that he needed the people to see God. And so he held aloft the ark, the, the, the rod uh, of God, and it was a banner under which they were fighting. So we can say we learned two great lessons here. That is that we need to be engaged in prevailing prayer, and we also need to be upholding the banner and fighting and living under the banner of God as well. 
But then thirdly, I like you to notice it was a personal demonstration of their faith. Who, who are the people that can say God is our banner? Jehovah Nissi. Well, it can only be those that truly belong to God. It can, could not be the Amalekites. They couldn't say that Jehovah is our banner, uh, but to the nation of Israel they could. And they looked to that banner and were greatly encouraged by it. And so we are mindful of the fact that we have a, a close connection to our banner. And it, it uh, proves and it shows clearly our allegiance. Now, if, you're a, if you follow football, and perhaps you're a football fan, and maybe you have a team. So, for instance, your team may be Manchester United. That would be the team that you follow. Well, if somebody was to drape a flag of, say, Liverpool or of Manchester City from your house, you would be embarrassed thinking, this is not the flag uh, of the team that I support. You'd be embarrassed by it. In the same way, perhaps you'd be embarrassed if you were patriotic if there was a different flag other than the Union Jack that would drape from your house. Well, when we think of the banner which flies above us, it is not something that we shrink away from. It is something, of course, that we are personally connected to. He is our God. He is our Saviour. And so we delight uh, to fight and to live under his banner, and we delight to live for his cause. And so we are not ashamed of it. And so when we think about the banner that we fight under, what could that banner be? And I think in the, modern, in the Christian context today, what we can say is the banner under which we live, the ensign, the colours, if you like, under which we live, is none other than the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember what the Apostle Paul said in Romans chapter 1 and verse 16. He said, For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It's the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. And in Galatians, uh, Paul said, But God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me and I unto the world. So that is the banner under which we fight, and we fight under it gladly. We gladly would uh, claim our allegiance to the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ when we consider all that he's done for us. In fact, when we think about the cross, we think to ourselves that it is a wonderful display to this world that God so loved us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Song of Solomon's, we read, his banner over me was love. When we think about the cross, isn't that what we think of? It reminds us of the fact that this is the banner that speaks and displays the wonderful love that God has for us. 1 John chapter 4 says, In this was manifested the love of God toward us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world that we might live through him. Here in his love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. So we're greatly encouraged by that. So when you think about this banner, it was a public demonstration of faith in God. It was a powerful demonstration of their faith in God. There was a practical demonstration of their faith in God and it was a personal demonstration of their faith in God. You know, as you go through the Christian life and as you may face some battles and go through some times of struggle, I want to encourage you to lift up the cross and fight under and live under that wonderful banner, that wonderful ensign that we're able to have before us. In Psalms chapter 60, the psalmist said, Thou hast given a banner to them that fear thee, that it may be displayed because of the truth. The banner over us is love. The banner over us is, of course, the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. Going back to Exodus, when the battle was finally won, 
It wasn't Joshua that was praised and his army. It wasn't Aaron and Hur that were praised for their help. And it wasn't Moses that was praised as he lifted up the high, the rod of God. No, it was Jehovah Nissi that was praised. The Lord our banner. He was the one that gave to us the victory. Keep on marching under the banner of the cross and he will give you the victory. You know, we sometimes sing that song, sound the battle cry, see the foe is nigh, raise the standard high for our Lord. Gird your armor on, stand firm everyone, rest your cause upon his holy word. Sometimes when we read those words, or we'll sing those words, raise the standard high. Perhaps you've been thinking to yourself, uh, is that a matter of live, you know, living to a high standard? Living a good life? Or rather, we should be thinking, raise the standard high. In the sense of the banner of us as we fight. We gird our armor on. We get ready for the battle. Let's raise the standard high. The cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the, the colors. That's the sign under which we march under which we fight. Jehovah Nissi, the Lord who is our banner. Let us pray. Our gracious Father, we are thankful for our study today and what we're able to discover and see in the Word of God. We're thankful, Lord, that we can be reminded that Jehovah Nissi, the Lord, is our banner. Father, we pray that you'd forgive us where we lift high anything other than the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. Help us, Father, that we would be able to say, like the Apostle Paul, God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, Father, may we seek to lift high that royal standard, that wonderful banner, the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, today for loving us. We're thankful for so great a salvation. And we pray, Father, that you keep us uh, by your grace and give to us the victory, we pray. And we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you for joining with us today. And we trust that the Lord will bless the rest of your week. And we look forward to seeing you on Sunday. Goodbye. <laughs>